Welcome back guys for another episode of Pole Barn Garage where we are back to work on the Silver Dollar Chevy. Where we're starting today is by getting the hood out of this big old box here, putting the hood savers on it, getting it bolted on, calling the front sheet metal good enough for now. Before we bolt this thing on here, I'm going to put the hood savers on that we salvaged off the old hood. I can tell you right now that these are not going to fit actually. Yeah, they don't fit very good on this hood. Maybe that's why they didn't bolt them underneath the hood hinge like you're supposed to on the other hood. Regardless, we're just going to attach them with some self-tappers. And these self-tappers will definitely hold it in place. Well, that effectively did nothing. Excellent. Well, I'm working solo at the moment, so I guess the only thing to do is to try to gorilla this thing on there by myself. Oops, that's the roof. That's still the roof. Yep. Well, I'm going to have to fix those dings later. Yep. Ah. Ah. And the Taiwanese did a good job on this one. It's heavy. Dear older subscribers, when does the time come when you're not able to do stuff like this anymore? I feel like that time is approaching. Oh, Can I fix that too? Yep. Oh, oh, there goes my hat. That's good. That's good. Woo! Damn. Just for giggles, let's see how far off it is. Oh yeah, no, it's really bad. Well, I mean, it's got like a six inch gap over here. Pretty normal. Gotta do some adjusting here, but you can see kind of what the uh, look that I was accidentally going for with this cow hood. Kind of. 80s street machine truck. It's also the only one they had in stock, but LMC did provide us that and appreciate that. I tell you one thing, that's a quality piece right there. That took everything I had. <laughs> well, last night I messed with this door trying to get it better, and it did. You have to, you know, get creative with this right here. That rest of it's okay. Dad's over here trying to help me get this hood to function. It's got some really good gaps on it. They're only like an inch or two. Still too tight here, we shim that out. Must have pulled the finger out just a hair. Mm. It's even all the way back. That's what I'm least. saying. That's, and it's even here. I can't move the fender in though, because it's already inside of the power. Can you move it out? Because this looks like it needs to be brought out just here. I probably could, but I'm afraid it'll throw this off. Yeah, it just barely clear, so let's go ahead and move this Put out. Put another shim in there. Trim the edge of the hood off here, because it's, I don't, I don't know why. So Dad went to the hardware store and got this edging or whatever, and uh, Just he's put jangle aluminum. yeah aluminum so you know it won't rust. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, just gotta fill in the gaps a little bit. You know, no big deal. But what we'll do is let this sit in here, and then this is gonna give a nice little layer. Just to put a skin coat of filler over it. You'll never know. You won't even know by looking on the inside, honestly. Then uh, same thing. We'll have to do the same thing on this side here. But, Definitely let Dad take care of this one because I I don't have the eyes for this. Grind that a little here bit. A bit just to get it where it's the same gap. Yeah. Front lip right here needs trimmed, and then from about here to here, literally a grinder is going to that little four-inch grinder will take that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just and open it up a bit. This side's ready to go. Cool. I wonder if it'll open. Uh, yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> huh? Not really. That's a no. Yeah. It's definitely caught on black. I think it's still hitting right here. There, it went. The hood opens. That's good. This is the only original piece of the truck, and uh, Time to put that back on. It, it actually fits. I mean, it's a little high here, but it'll suck down. This side's perfect. Get a bolt in there to hang it on. And, but that does kind of prove that it's really the fenders that are sort of the problem here. Looks like a trunk. Well, I'm going to attach the lower part of this fender that has nothing to attach to with uh, self-tappers. Just go ahead 
shoot a self tamper into this. Yeah, that's gonna work for sure. I've actually done this before in high school. I had a 65 cutlass. The entire thing was held together with self tappers. It's about that time that I discovered the wonders of the self tapping screw. Changed my life. Fixed permanently forever and ever. That will never be a problem. While I'm at it, I may as well go ahead and attach this inner fender properly. You know, these really don't work that good for this. Well, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I might be able to put actual bolts in some of these. And that's enough. I don't even know what I'll do with myself if I can actually get bolts in these things. I mean, you can do that? I mean, it's crooked, but, you know, cross-threaded is better than no-threaded. <laughs> Incredible. Well, I'm going to attach this inner fender the only way I know how with self-tappers. Now, I really wanted to use them on the other side, but unfortunately all the bolts lined up, so thankfully I'll get to make up for it here. Oh yeah. Two's probably enough. Front sheet metal's done. It's attached, it's solid, and uh, that's good enough for me. Obviously we have body work to do to it, but before I even get started on any body work, I'm gonna flip this thing around and we're gonna take on the shit end of the stick known as the bed. Now let me just go ahead and remove the bed. Ah! I knew that wasn't gonna work, but uh, surely it's not held on that well, right? It uh, looks like this thing bolts in pretty much like a regular truck bed does uh, with carriage bolts. There's six of them, but I think that's it. And I may not even have to mess with pulling the fenders or anything. There's no reason to. The fenders are all held on with these Phillips head screws here, and I, you know, I think we can guess how easily that's going to come apart. So obviously these aren't going to unbolt. We know that, right? I mean, let's just get real here. It's not going to happen. Well, hopefully I can just cut the heads off of them without catching the wood bed on fire. Or if I catch the wood bed on fire, kind of takes care of my problem. It would be convenient if this bed was more rotted. But of course, the only part that isn't rotted in the truck is the part that I would like to be rotted. Maybe if I bust the boards out of the way, that'll help. Come here, Mr. Crowbar. Let's see what we can do. It's like opening the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, it's very sturdy and, you know, built incredibly well. Come on. Pole Barn Garage Woodworking Edition. I failed shop class. Ah. That's going about as well as I predicted. Let go, my ego. Come on, you. Yeah, things are going really well, guys. Goodbye. Time to go. Let's go. There. Ah. I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> Goodbye. Come on. Just a few more. And they'll all be much harder than this. You know, the air hammer is far superior to the normal manual hammer. I don't know why carpenters don't use them more. You know, look at all this woodworking I'm doing. Put another log on fire. Woo! I got them all unbolted. I think it's loose. I don't really know. I guess the only thing to do is just pick up on it and see what happens. Well, I think the last thing I gotta do is get the fuel filler neck unbolted here and well, one of the screws is stuck, so I really have no choice but to use this cutoff wheel and generate tons of sparks near this wide open fuel fill. This is better. See? <laughs> Safety first. I can't grab anything, everything's sharp and rusty. What I should do is do this smart. I should drive the truck that runs, go dump this bed off, then drive the truck back. Before I pull her on out and rip that bed out of here, I figured I'd get the tailgate off. And uh, that's not really for me, but for you. Uh, if you want your own piece, Pole Barn Garage Memorabilia with a free side of tetanus. How can you turn that down? You can just email me 
if you can pick this up in the Kansas City area, it's yours for free. I'll, I'll autograph it or do something stupid like that. Just send me an email at pbgdalton at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, first person that can come and get it, you can have it. There it is. Oh, yeah. If only you had another set of hands. There's a bolt here. I cut the head of it off, but it's one of the really long carriage bolts. And it won't come out. But that's what it's getting hung up on. Hey, you got it. It's off. Good job. What do we do now? It's, hang on, hang on. I got keep it. pushing, but it's got on. You got it? All right, flopping. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> Flop. Nice flop. Let me just go ahead and restore the frame out here. As we're storing the frame going there. Tasty. You wear a mask. How is this frame not rotted? With all that crap packed into it. I mean, that's salt. On account, it's Chevy. <laughs> Did compressed air blow a hole in quarter inch plate steel? Yes. Okay. Finally, I have figured out what this is for. Removing bolts. Wow, that hurts. Ow. <laughs> Come on! It's making me look bad! Let me give it a whack. It hurts incredibly bad to hit that with this giant iron wrench. I like pain. Things are falling out of the truck. I don't think that's ever coming out. Test your strength. One quarter. Hey, I got it further than you did. You didn't do anything. I don't, I don't think it's ever It hasn't now. moved at all. Well, this was a good idea. Yep. Why didn't you tell me it? Fuck. God, I put my elbows on the frame. <laughs> the last thing I want to do tonight is get this big old honking implement bumper off of here. I mean... Look at that thing. That thing's got to weigh 200 pounds. That's going to go really good on the brown truck, Swanee. But uh, not so good on a step-side short bed half-ton sport truck? No. I suppose let's see if it'll even come off of here. The bolts don't look that bad. Let's see if the air gun fares any better. They're kind of rusty. Just a little bit. Just a, just a touch. It's like it was a plow trucker. So I'll bust out the old double barrel here. That's a breaker bar with a double barrel shotgun barrel punched onto it. Why does it have a double barrel shotgun barrel shoved onto it? Leverage. Science. Oh. Yep, broke it right off. That's all right. We'll take that. Woo! Ah, yeah. Oh, hey. That one might come out. Smoky. And if the double barrel doesn't suit your fancy, you can always try the old semi-automatic. Oh, snapped it right off. What else is holding you on, huh? Kick? Oh, there it goes. Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't want to pick that up. My back already hurts. Oh my God. I was about to say everybody wished my back good riddance. <laughs> That's got to weigh two, uh, 200 pounds. Well, get away from the boys there. Jesus! Back to it today. I've got my tractor paint armed and ready, and my Dollar Tree paintbrush all set to go. But before I dig into that, I want to cut out this butchered taillight wiring here, which appears to be some sort of light-duty house wiring. The factory harness right here 
So we're just gonna grab that. For now, I just wanna get this out of the way. We'll paint everything, then we can come back and do that. Probably I'll do the inside of it first, huh? This is as close to a frame-off restoration as you will ever see me do. This is more than adequate. Well, look at that. Looks like brand new, you know, new springs, new shackle mounts, new shackles, new frame, new cross members, new body bushings, everything. It's all done. Now, I do have those bushings, but I'm not going to replace them, and that's only because, A, they don't look that bad, and B, everything is fitting right now. You go messing with that, you can screw everything up, just leave it alone. And they, they seem to be all right. Dad came by earlier and went ahead and glassed in these. And uh, as you can tell, well, you're never going to be able to tell. This side, too, just needs a final skin coat of bud over the top. And uh, look at that beautiful, perfect gap. I suppose before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll probably dig into trying to get the back of this cab squared away. It means knocking down that mud there. Probably get another coat on that. Scabbing up these little bubbles and stuff here. Just trying to get that roughed in enough that we can bolt a bed to it and I can paint it without feeling too bad. I'm gonna start sanding on this. Don't worry guys, I got my PPE on, alright? I mean, I can't afford a dust mask, but I had a good dirty rag laying around. It's gonna be good enough. You do you, alright? I'll do me. It's gonna be okay. Save your breath. Then we're just gonna make sure we're keeping our DA flat. And, uh, you know, we don't want to be digging a whole bunch of assholes all over this thing. Right, well, we got her all knocked down. I mean, just kind of lightly rough. This is not super important. However, we got some rust holes back here. And if you notice, look at that. That green is short strand glass, and then that's filler. And uh, looks like it lasted for about 30 fucking years, so I think we'll just do it again. It's saying it's had a cab corner put on it worse than I could do. And uh, this whole thing is just warped all to hell because somebody welded it badly. Uh, so this is going to need a filler coat all the way down. Uh, I don't know anything else in here really. And there's just dents everywhere on here. And if we're trying to paint this thing black, that's not going to fly. So we're going to have to dig in to try to find all those. But for starters here, I'm going to use my u pull Gold Filler. And I'm going to give a little coat right there and try to finish off the back of that cab corner. Skip those holes because I'm going to use short strand on those to fill them so they last. Got my handy dandy workbench here. The thing is, you don't just fill the spot that's low. You got to go past it and be able to feather it in. You get, that's the most important thing when you're filling anything is you're never going to get it perfect. It's never just going to be flat. You got to blend it in and then you're going to let your primer build up and then even everything out. So it's never going to be perfect. It's better to be a little bit high on things than it is to be low. Because you can always blend something that's high when you get into your block sanding. I'm just going to mix up some of this good... <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> good stuff. I'm going to mix it up real good until this turns into a beautiful green... <laughs> ...paste. It came to my attention the other day that that sweet smell that you get out of the filler it's actually styrene, and it's incredibly hazardous to you. But maybe I'll work this one from top down. Might be a little better. If you pick a direction, stick with it though. And you can regulate how much filler you're applying by the amount of pressure you put on the spreader. That's a skill that takes a while to master, but if you need to get it a little thicker, so like on your edges here, kind of push a little harder and then let off of it and let that filler kind of let the meat of that filler get in where it needs to get into which we know our lowest spot is right here so that's 
what we're going to shoot for. Contradict myself. Let's fill that rust hole with body filler right now. You know, because that's what I do. I am just one giant walking contradiction. I'm just going up to the body line over here, and I'm going to cover this whole cab corner. Whole thing. Give her a nice skin coat. There's plenty here for us to work with when we go to sand. Probably 80% of this is coming off, but you got to have it on there to take it off. That's what I always say about my pants. I used to be pretty good at this stuff, but it's been a minute, and I'm a little bit rusty, so you guys are going to have to bear with me. As I try to relearn this as much myself as, <laughs> as I try to show you guys how to do it, get the short strand out and gob those holes full of it and then pretend it doesn't exist. Because that is the way of getting your project done. Just use this razor sharp piece of metal to spoon the glass out of here. Take a sip of beer. Look, it's gone. Like it was never there. I mixed up too much. Oh, I know just where to put it. Right here where they have this stupid CB antenna. Uh, I want a CB, but not right there. What hole? Well, we're going to see if I can ruin Dad's handiwork here. I'm going to try to put the filler in this. I don't know what the best way to work this would be. What, did, what would Dad do? This is what I would call advanced making things work. I'm only like, I'm like a journeyman when it comes to this kind of stuff. And then Dad's like the master. I'll just do this, and then I can cut that gap back out. Maybe I can run it along the top. Oh yeah, there we go. That's how we do it. I'm learning. We're all learning together. Here. All right, there we go. Looks pretty decent, I think. I think you can see the idea here. Knock that down flat. Cut that groove back out. And those are going to be just fine. That's really the last major repair this thing needed. I'm out here again tonight. I've only got about an hour to try to get something done, but you know, that's kind of how we all do it, right? So I'm just going to try to knock out uh, some of that glass, get a coat of filler on that, and then start knocking down this filler. I'm going to show you guys how to knock down fiberglass to get it ready for filler. I'm going to put my PPE on first. Now there's nothing overly complicated about this. We got our glass right here. And you don't need this to be perfect because you're going to be smoothing it out with the filler. So. Just grind it down and if you know, let it dip in to the hole. And there we go. That is a strong repair that will outlive this truck, I guarantee it. You can only do so much with a six inch DA, otherwise, because you only have six inches of surface area here. Tell me about it. So sometimes you're going to need something a little, you know, more. When those cases rise, you can either go with an eight inch DA uh, that has more surface area, or this board file here. This is very similar to like a, a blocking board, except better in every single way and faster. And, uh, you know, because I'm not doing this for the Discovery Channel, I, I'm, I'm going to do the less dramatic thing and just use this. So all of this is going to need another coat of mud. Just another skin coat to help feather it in. Didn't quite get it that time, but that's all right. Before I go to sanding on the hood here, I'm going to cut the gap back out with the cutoff wheel and the, uh, you know, however wide this is, that's perfect. Nope, don't cut the hood in half. Peel this tape off. Okay. All right, I should be able to open the hood now. Now, I'll be able to get flat on the tops of these fenders and sand them down. Not perfect, but 
I think a lot of that will block out. And now I'm just going to run a piece of 40 grit down the gap to smooth it out and make it even all the way down. I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you to go right down to the comments there and just type something, anything at all. Hello, hi, tell me how you're doing. What'd you do today? How was work? I don't know. Just let me know. It really helps a growing YouTuber grow. You know, it's like uh, Green Giant. Comments, and, and then just click that like button. It takes 0.1 seconds. Just click it. It does nothing. It costs you nothing at all. Back out here again for another night. Let's see if I can get anything done. Uh, I'm just going to start knocking down mud. I'll bring you back in when I'm done and see what we have left to work with. Here's something worth mentioning. You can see whenever you start sanding down two layers of filler, even if you're using the same filler and the same hardener, the colors aren't going to be exactly the same depending how much hardener you put in. So like right here, there's a darker yellow spot. I know I'm hitting the first layer of filler. Now that's both a good and a bad thing. I don't want to keep going. Once I start to see bare metal show up, I've gone too far. But I want to, we're still a little bit fat back here, so I want to keep working it. I want to keep working it as much as I can until we get to a point where I feel like I can block sand it with some high build urethane primer. That's pretty good. I like that. Still a little bit rough around the edges. This is behind the cab. Not a big deal. Now I gotta move on to the outside edge here and knock it down. Obviously do the other side and the roof and the entire truck, but no big deal, no rush. Probably the most difficult thing to learn when you're doing body work and uh, this has taken me quite a while to learn. I've been doing it for about 15 years. Know when to not go any further. See right here, we got some bare metal showing. Obviously, I can't show you how it feels. There's a lot of old body work in this B-pillar. And it's wavy, but you've got to remember, this is not the end result. Now, I have probably three or four coats of primer and block sanding is your end result. And that's where you do your real body work is with that. Basically, you're just trying to lay a good base here, a solid foundation to work from. This coat of filler is maybe a credit card, probably not even that. It's very thin, but it's just enough to smooth it out a little bit that we could take her the rest of the way with primer. You know, if you could bang that into your head, you'll have a lot more success. Just know when to stop. Well, hello down there. Now, I put you down there for a reason, to explain something. The roof of this thing really needs stripped and it's pretty beat up. But I'm not going to do anything about it because, can you see it? No. Okay. That answers the question. I mean, I guess if you're Patrick Swayze in Red Dawn and you got a thousand screaming commies coming at you, you know, and you're in the back of this thing over the KC lights and the roll bar with an AK-47, you know, then sure, you might notice the dents. Now this door here, unfortunately, it's been painted a couple of times and some of the paint's flaked off and there's a pretty good gap down the bare metal. I mean, I don't know, credit card at least. It needs stripped, or at least portions of it need stripped, like this whole window frame where all this paint is chipped off of it. There's not enough surface area to blend it out. Now down here, in the middle of the door, I can feather that out enough that we can backfill it with primer. But this window frame's got to be stripped. i got to take the mirror off. And then this has the typical square body door handle reinforcement here. It's loose. I uh, probably need to pull that out and then throw a tack weld on the reinforcement back here. The top edge of this door fits really tight, and that's because this truck is not correct in any way. So we're just going to make our own edge. We'll just take a little off the top, you know. Ow. I, I probably need safety glasses. Yeah, just shave it some. Oh yeah. <laughs> Much better. 
there's an actual gap up there now. I gotta cut this mirror off because the Torx head screw broke. Then I hit it with a hammer and then I broke the mirror. What is that, seven years bad luck? I mean, that probably make it at even 30 about now. So what happens here, why this door handle is, you know, floppy. There's this reinforcement plate back here and it's glued on from the factory with some sort of adhesive. You can see it moves real easy. Well, what I'm going to do is just try to grind right here and then just throw a tack weld on it to hold it in place and that should take care of that. I think it actually melted that adhesive and it glued again. Much better. That'll do her. You know, we, we will fix that. Well, I'm just gonna try to get this door stripped and not much to see here. Just use this 40 grit on a DA. Don't want to use a grinder. Don't put a bunch of cuts in the metal that don't need to be there. Take your time and use the DA. Yeah, tell me your secrets. Let's see where you've been in the past. It, oh, you've had a little work done, I see. Well, it's all right. You know, we can keep that between us. It's okay. Whoa, is that a, is that a tumor? Oh, no, no, you're good. I'm well, back out here today trying to get a little more done, and I uh, just wanted to point out a couple of things. One thing I like to do is I'm working something, especially if I'm having to strip all the paint off of it, and therefore I'm not able to see anything in the panel. I just take a pencil and mark problem areas as I come across them, and obviously all that, but, you know, if I see a ding or a dent or something like that, you know, I just try to mark it. That way, whenever I get in here to do the filler on the big obvious stuff, like the huge dip in the middle of the door, uh, you know, it's already here. I know where it's at. I could get everything in one go and not end up forgetting something like I, uh, you know, prone to do. So if you got your standard dual action sander here, or your DA, there's a little knob on the inside here and you can twist that and that will limit the dual acting mechanism so that it is single acting and it only rotates on one plane, effectively turning this into a grinder. And if you have really stubborn paint, you could use that to grind the paint off and it's a little less aggressive than like an actual four inch grinder or something like that, it won't be leaving those big hard marks in the steel where you're going to have to fill them in later with primer. See, that's pretty effective with a piece of 40 grit on there. And it's not quite just a single rotation. If you look at it, there is, it's still, you know, orbiting. It's just not orbiting on two planes of circles and stuff. Well, we got us a pretty naked door here, and uh, that's going to help us beat a couple of these dents out. Uh, we can't get to too many of them, but I can definitely get to this one in the middle. So I got my dolly here, and uh, I'm going to try to weasel it up into the low spot of the dent, actually, right below this body line. Then, when I hit this, the pressure from that dolly is going to let this high spot where the metal... So when a dent happens, the metal doesn't just disappear. And when you get a dent, that metal has got to go somewhere. It's going to go wherever the path of least resistance was whenever the impact occurred. This went in, boom, and it pushed up everything above the body line. Now, actually, me just tapping that pretty much got rid of that dent. We got a little bit more to take out, but... There's just a few ripples here. Just a little bit of... You don't gotta, you know, don't he-man the thing. You know, just get it, you know, just nice light taps. You actually, when you're... So I have the dolly here, and if I'm gonna hit here, I'm actually using the dolly to force things around. I'm expanding the metal here and then trying to shape it with the dolly. Just gonna run a piece of tape down this fender gap here. Keep things a little cleaner because this whole front of this thing's been rolled at one time. Door flew open, caught it or something. Let's try to get some of these dents here. 
got a hundred door dings and stuff in it that we're just not going to be able to get right now while it's in bare metal. I know they're here, but I can't see them all, so they may just have to wait till we get some primer on her. So we got to work pretty much from here all the way down to where the body side molding was. Needs to be coated with a skin coat. Try to maintain our edge on the body line there, just so I know where the body line is. Looks like a lot of mud, but it really isn't, all right? So we'll be board filing and knocking that down flat once it cures. And I'm kind of running out of time for this week, so let's try to knock out maybe one more thing before we call it quits for this episode. Use up the sandpaper I got on there, stripping this door down, although it is original paint, so I don't, I don't have to be quite so hardcore about this one. It's a pretty decently straight door, and it's original paint. I don't think it's hiding much. And then for the fenders and the hood, we can hit that with some 180 and just rough it up and look for any dings and stuff, because there's always dings in new sheet metal. door had a huge dent in it that was causing it to cave in and uh, so what I ended up doing is just tinging up the part that was sticking out and that gave it a little bit of strength left. We'll build up the rest of the primer but I kind of got ripped on it. It's freaking thing's got a rust hole right in the middle of it where the body side molding sat on the side so uh, I'm gonna fix that the right way just by gobbing it full of this you know short strand fiberglass filler but we'll use a little bit this dent is pretty deep here and so here's where you could spend hours hammer and dollying that and you might get it better. You probably won't. You probably do more harm than good. Or you just it's you don't want to gob this much mud and something. I mean that would be a quarter of an inch. I mean it, that's too much. So what you do instead is use a little bit of this short strand fiberglass reinforced filler as a base. Just a little bit in the deep part of the dent there and it's going to be strong enough. It won't be that stereotypical kick the side of the car and all oh, the bondo fell out. Oh, ho, ho. This door's a butchered mess anyway. I don't feel bad about this. Just gonna ding in these mirror holes here. And then we're gonna smear fiberglass over those too because I don't care. Gone. So we're gonna put the sport mirrors on this thing. Real quick here, we're gonna knock down the EDP coating that's on these new sheet metal parts. Use 180 because we don't want to scratch up the metal. There's no point. However, it is important to stay flat, flat, perpendicular. And we're gonna do that so we can find low spots because there's gonna be some. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a spot right here. And it's not much, but it is a little low. It's nothing I would worry about filling though. We'll get her with a primer. I got all that glass ground down and mudded in. It's gonna look pretty good. I think a simple board file sanding, we can get that knocked out. I haven't got to this fender yet, but I did about half the hood. It's surprisingly straight. There's a couple dings. And uh, this fender is actually very nice too. There's almost nothing in it. I mean, there's a couple ripples right here. Nothing I don't think a good heavy coat of primer will take care of. We gotta knock this down and it's ready for prime. We got a little spot putty back here on just a few little things, no big deal. Uh, that, then all this is ready for primer and the roof. Unfortunately, we're out of time, guys. Uh, this is about as much as I could get done in the last four or five days. I've been building a deck on my house with my grandpa and uh, from scratch, you know, and then that's been consuming a lot of time because I'm not paying for labor, all right, you know? Materials are bad enough and well, I ain't rich. So speaking of join the low buck club if you want to help out 99 cents a month See all the videos early uh, and also subscribe and like and do all that stupid stuff and uh, You know, you're gonna see this thing again next. I'm probably gonna piddle with it uh, on in my off time ha 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 and try to get a little closer to primer So the next time you see it will be spraying some primer on it and trying to put that bed together for the rear I don't think I even showed the bed sides I got for it, but yeah, they're, they're they're freaking nice. I got a really nice bed, and that's courtesy of my muffler guy uh, at Rose's Muffler in Grandview, Missouri. Uh, go there if you need anything at all, and tell him I sent you. Anyway, I got to get ready to go to Texas, and you guys aren't going to see anything for probably a week or two uh, out of me. So don't panic. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, everything's normal and fine and happy and kosher, but... Me and my brother and Kevin from Junkyard Digs 
are going down to Texas to do a collaboration with a big YouTuber that you've all heard of. We gotta get a van running and driving and drive it to Phoenix, Arizona to go put, pull the motor out of it and put it in uh, a very deserving individual's project. Uh, uh, look, that's a that's a really poor summation of it. Just keep, just stay tuned. <laughs> Things are going to get wild. Follow the Instagram and the Facebook and all that stuff, and you can probably stay updated that way, you know, with, with a big secret. We'll see you guys next time, and thanks again for watching.